1 Corinthians chapter 14. Tongues and prophecy. Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you'll be talking only to God, since people won't know what you're saying. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But the one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but the one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy, for prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues unless someone interprets what you are saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. Dear brothers and sisters, If I should come to you speaking in an unknown language, how would that help you? But if I bring you a revelation or something of special knowledge or prophecy or teaching, that will be helpful. Even lifeless instruments like the flute or the harp must play the notes clearly or no one will recognize the melody. And if the bugler doesn't sound a clear call, how will the soldiers know they are being called to battle? It's the same for you. If you speak to people in words they don't understand, how will they know what you're saying? You might as well be talking into empty space. There are many different languages in the world, and every language has meaning. But if I don't understand a language, I will be a foreigner to someone who speaks it, and the one who speaks it will be a foreigner to me. And the same is true for you, since you are so eager to have special abilities the Spirit gives, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. So anyone who speaks in tongues should pray also for the ability to interpret what has been said. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Well then, what should I do? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. For if you praise God only in the Spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you are saying? You will be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people who hear you. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. But in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to others to help them than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil. But be mature in understanding matters of this kind. It is written in scriptures. I will speak to my own people through strange languages and through the lips of foreigners, but even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So you see, that speaking in tongues is a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. Even so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your church meeting and hear everyone speaking in an unknown language, they will think you are crazy. But if you all are prophesying and unbelievers or people who do not understand these things come into your meeting, they will be convicted of sin and judge by what you say. As they listen, their secret thoughts will be exposed, and they will fall into their, onto their knees and worship God, declaring, God is truly here among you. A call to orderly worship. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will tell someone special revelations from God, uh, one will speak in tongues, another will interpret what is said, but everything that is done must strengthen all of you. No more than two or three shall speak in tongues. They must speak one at a time, 
and someone must interpret what they say. But if no one is present who can interpret, they must be silent in your church meeting and speak in tongues to God privately. Let two or three people prophesy and let the others evaluate what is said. But if someone is prophesying and another one receives a revelation from the Lord, the one who is speaking must stop. In this way, all who prophesy will have a turn to speak, one after the other, so that everyone will learn and be encouraged. Remember that people who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. As in all the meetings of God, God's holy people, women should be silent in the church meetings. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. If they have any questions, they should ask their husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in the church meetings. Or do you think God's word originated with you, the Corinthians? Are you the only ones to whom it was given? If you claim to be a prophet or think you are spiritual, you should recognize that what I am saying is a commandment from the Lord himself. But if you do not recognize this, you yourself will not be recognized. So my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. Don't forbid speaking in tongues, but be sure that everything is done properly and in order. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope spending this time in scripture was nourishing for your spirit. I will catch you guys in a future video. We'll continue reading through 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and Romans chapter 15. Look out for those videos. I'll catch you guys later. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs>